Oh, I zoomed in more. Okay. Hi, I'm Elena. I'm Courtney. And welcome back to some Quality Cat. Okay. How do we start? Why are your intros so hard? Yeah, I don't know why. I just like had that. Oh, and I just left <laughs> you hanging? Yes. Oh. <laughs> If you've been following our videos, you know that we were in a long distance relationship because I uh, moved to Colombia for an amazing opportunity. And Courtney had an amazing job back in Milwaukee that she was sticking around there for. And then we published some long distance relationship tips. And then you saw last <laughs> week that, oh wait, it didn't last long at all. Yeah, long distance sucks. So. Oh, my camera battery is gonna die. So, and yeah, last week you learned that Courtney is now in Colombia, mm -hmm. and you're probably wondering, how do we make how that happen? How the heck did they? Yeah, are they rich? How can they make that? No, we're not rich. We're both from humble backgrounds, but we have a lot, a lot of determination. Sorry about the truck. I want to repeat that that we have a ton, ton of faith in the universe. Also, just trust in our abilities to make things work out. Yeah, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the logistics, about how I can be down here in terms of like finances, visa, etc. And then I guess maybe my, like our decision to have me come down here. So let's start with the decision because that was probably the first step in the process. When she found out she was gonna get it, we talked a lot about what we were gonna end up doing during this 10 months that she was gonna be gone. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the possibility of me coming down, Elena is very, very much logical and very much like, if you're gonna come down, you need to make sure you either have a job or you have this much money saved up. She's very, very stern about all those things. Yeah, so I guess when I say MacGyver's of life, it means that <laughs> I, everything is thought out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's very meticulous about some of those things. So we talked about a lot. We talked about like, like even like if I had to save, if I couldn't like get um, a job or I weren't, wasn't gonna have an income, we're like, oh well, worst case scenario, I'll be down like after the holidays. Was mm -hmm. that, you know? Yeah, January, February for a few months. Yeah, we even talked about like worst case ever. What I would be that I'd just have to come down and visit a couple times. And this is all, yes, all us talking before she left. Yeah. And then so she left and... Yeah, so we made it about a little over two weeks before we were like, buy the friggin' plane ticket, you're coming down here. <laughs> it was 17 <laughs> days exactly. <laughs> but that kind of decision came from our understanding and ability, like she talked about, knowing that we were gonna make it work. And it's not like we didn't have any plan, it's not like I didn't have any savings and I just like bought the plane ticket. It was to set up a real goal. So we were like, okay, we're gonna buy you a plane ticket and now we have a set amount of time to figure it out. Because it kind of was starting to feel like there was so many different parts yeah. and that it was like, it, things were just gonna keep, keep getting pushed back. Mm -hmm. Like it was gonna be too hard to figure out unless we just did it. Yeah, and the finance financial goals that I put forth seemed almost contrarily so, less obtainable if we didn't have that goal even though it was coming quicker than we anticipated. Yeah, just because life gets in the way and if something were to occur that we're going to cost a lot of money, I don't know. It just seemed like we needed that date in order to get all the other pieces moving and get everything set and yeah. to kind of like make the plan. It's kind of like our flag to the universe, say, hey, this is happening, please, 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 please help us. <laughs> and so far, so good, right? Yeah. Um, so part of the reason that Courtney wanted to come down here as well is not just to be with me, but living in a country is the best way to learn a language. And she's been wanting to learn Spanish for a long time, and so this is just an ace opportunity. So she's enrolled in the university that I actually work at to learn Spanish, which allows her to stay here without using her tur tourist visa. And so this semester, or this year, we still have to leave the country after the 90 days, but technically she still has 90 days on a tourist visa left. However, um, so which, which those reset calendar years. If you want to learn more about the specifics and complexities of visas, 
hit us up in the comments below or send us an email and we can try to answer some questions. We're not experts, but uh, I did talk to many, many people in order for this to be able to work out. And so what's going to happen next semester is she's going to enroll in a semester of Spanish. So that will enable her to get a student visa. So she won't be staying here at any point illegally. Yeah. And we'll put our email down in the description box below, but it's just thequalitycat at gmail.com. And of course, those kind of questions, some of them we probably won't be able to answer because it's going to, all these visa questions very much differ country to country. And some countries are far easier to get like st student visas in, which like Colombia is supposed to be fairly good for getting um, student visas. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so we're back. Um, camera died. We made an outfit change. It's like three days later. <laughs> but we're back to finish this recording. We covered most of the reason why Courtney came down here, how we came to the decision. Covered the visa aspect. I think the last thing that we were talking about was just um, the ability to get a student visa in Colombia um, seemed pretty simple. So that was our plan for next semester so that I can be here and study the whole semester um, without interruption and without having to leave the country. Yeah, and we also wanted to do that just in case there was the possibility of being able to return to Colombia in 2019. But that's up in the air, but regardless, we wanted to be prepared so that she would be able to join me. And if we use the 180 day visa, travel uh, visa, this tourist visa, then she would not be able to re-enter the country until 2020. Yeah. So with the student visa, she would still be able to get a different visa or just come in as a tourist for the remainder of the year. The other thing we wanted to talk about was financing. As we mentioned, we're not rich. We don't have a ton of money. We don't have parents who are paying our way at all. And right now we're kind of in a limbo uh, because Courtney is unemployed and I'm in employed but I'm not making a lot of money yeah and so luckily I'm in a field that I can work remotely in a lot of aspects so I'm a designer um, photo editor so I've been applying to websites um, that offer like freelance projects some of them are longer term some of them are single projects yeah so if you need help on any sort of design photography video editing she's your girl portfolio in the description below contact information in the description below call her up folks she's a real gem that was a good sales pitch <laughs> so yeah right now uh we're kind of in limbo and right now courtney is kind of under the gun to get these projects up and running but like i said previously we have a whole lot of faith in the universe and we have a whole lot of faith in our abilities so i think it's just a matter of time yeah, I think it's just a matter of time. I haven't been here that long yet. And so um, the amount of time I've actually been like applying and working towards things has been relatively short. So I'm just gonna continue kind of in those processes, um, continue working on my own stuff and... And focus on the gratitude, I guess, of being able to do that. Yeah. So we don't get frustrated very quickly and impatient because it's very easy when you're in this position to be like oh shit shit <laughs> yeah and i'm luckily in a position that and w something that we talked about that was most important for me coming down was to have um, a certain amount of money set aside for this lull period because anybody who does freelance work knows that there can be lull periods especially like if you're getting started because then you have to work on projects before you get paid for projects mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of times there's a big lag between the completion of the project and the pay. Yeah, and so just kind of being prepared for those moments. But yeah, so the other thing too is the reason why we are able to make this decision and you know throw our hopes into this is because it, the cost of living here isn't too expensive and right now we're sharing a room in a shared house so that's how we're saving a lot of money and just like for example, food, we bought a week's worth of fruits and vegetables, which sustained us for even into this week yeah. uh, for $10. We can also go out to lunch, and in Colombia they eat these menudos de dias, which is soap, then a main plate, 
using and soap. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's soup. A main plate with that usually comes with rice, potato, lentils, and some sort of meat if you want. If it's vegetarian, maybe it comes with fruit or something like that. And then a juice. And that for one person is so much. We don't eat that much food. No. So we can split that. And in some cases, it's literally 150 a person. Yeah. So we don't need to be making the salary that we are making in the United States to be able to sustain a healthy, happy, I guess comfortable lifestyle here, which is awesome and takes a little bit of the pressure off. Nonetheless, you still have to earn some money to live, right? So that's where we're at. So if you have any questions about this, about quote unquote quitting your nine to five and moving abroad, um, it isn't that easy. It takes a lot of planning, it takes a lot of faith, and it takes a support system. So, and I think it also takes like the ability to like know that you have a fallback if something were to happen. We're like luckily, we're like I'm in a position that like the worst thing that could happen is I would have to go home, but I know that I would have family to stay with, and I know that like I could get a job in the service industry to make my bills. And so even like the worst case scenario, it's for me there's no like I would be homeless or anything. It's right. Everything's really calculated yeah. and there is a safety net in place. You know, knock on wood, that we don't have to use that and everything we're hoping for goes as planned. But again, if you have any questions about logistics or even just want some inspiration and support in going out and doing this on your own, count on us. That's what we're here for. We want to give you some quality advice because we are quality cat. Yeah. <laughs> so, so with that, like we said, we're going to put our email down in the description below if you have any questions. Otherwise, you can reach out to us on Instagram, where the quality cat, or we have our personal Instagrams down below as well. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you know, know when we upload new videos. I think we're trying to upload on Tuesdays now, every week. We'll have now more travel vlog content together and kind of us in Colombia, so that'll be cool. Yeah, I think we're, we're on like a really good track of ending it and then we just extended it too long. So ring that bell and then what'd you say? Uh, I said like reach out to us at the emails. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>